Oh my god. What happened to you? Oh, me. <laughs> Good question. Hmm. You know, I was... Oh, that's nice. It's turning out okay. See, over here, what we're doing is every time we have a different venue of the video ministry or videos, we try to put it up here so we can kind of explain that, you know, hey, this is part of a different set, a different segment, or a different venue of teaching that we want to, you know, use in some positive way to explain either the Word of God or Jesus or share a devotional or give a teaching or who knows, an expository message of some kind and relate in some way what we have shared or what we have experienced or what I have experienced in my life and make it available to you so that you could possibly identify it as something that you either are going through, might go through, or possibly God is using for you to say, hey, man, you know, been there, done that. <laughs> Thank God somebody else has and is talking about it. Because a lot of times people won't get real, you know, and that was one of the things that we decided in Vidigo was that we wanted to be real. We wanted to share the reality that when we say Jesus is real, we're not kidding. When we say Jesus can speak to you, we're not exaggerating. We're talking about there is a person, me, and I know there's a lot of other people, so <laughs> don't think that I'm anybody special, that you can hear audibly God's voice as well as at other times read God's word and hear his voice in a still small way and sigh. Sometimes read it by way of identification of the circumstances of life that are likewise happening within the scriptures themselves and so you kind of make a comparative circumstantial relationship of God manipulating those circumstances so that they fit the scripture and that's the way God speaks to you through a circumstantial venue or through the word of God as God is being spoken to you through a study on say Sunday or a Bible study that you're going through or in some way feelings kind of like well I feel like you know the Lord is leading me or peace well you know I have peace about it you know they have a comfort zone where it feels comfortable to go in a certain direction I think there's a lot of different ways that God can speak now the scripture says my sheep hear my voice and they know me. you can go there with whatever you want to do <laughs> um, if you have to explain it meaning voice is reading then I think you're getting the wrong message but it's okay God will meet you where you're at now me I personally say if you're only at one place and you're not dealing with the rest of what God said then maybe you might try asking him to speak to you personally because I think he wants to get to know you more than what you possibly have experienced so far and so and getting to know Jesus more, that's kind of why we started Didigo. You know, we, we began to relate all these things about what I went through as a Jesus freak, you know, and kind of went, wow, what's happening to me? I don't know. I got saved, and man, all this stuff came inside me, and I was like, what? Is it happening to everybody else? No, it's not. Why not? And some people it did, some people it didn't. So we related that, and we've been using that as devotional studies and Bible studies and other things and likewise we've been sharing in some of the things that I learned along the way for instance from navigators we're using the 2 7 series and we're doing the five scriptures you know that the whole Bible study that originally Calvary used way back when when they were first teaching the home pastors you know to kind of become home pastors because Calvary was getting bigger and these little little Bible studies were you know kind of breaking off into little home groups and people were the first ones, the first ones, and I don't know what happened since then because everything's exploded into huge and now they're very organized. God bless you. <laughs> and, uh, but in the early days it was just kind of like, hey, you know what, here's the five scriptures, you know, here's navigator stuff, you know, here, go with this and go with that and try this and try that. Now I'm sure with, you know, Bible schools and going to, you know, home, the pastor's classes and doing all that stuff, that it's a lot more organized. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> But in relating this information, that's what I do, is I relate. I don't tell you, I'm not expository to you, I'm relating to you information so that you can use that in a way that you can talk to God and God can talk to you and you can compare the two and find within yourself the reality of your experience with God because it's not just experiential. 
you are going to stand before God in a very real way, one-on-one, and deal with Him. So, might as well start now. So, one of the things that, the reason why I look like this, unshaved, tired, bloodshot, um, what else can I make? Now, geez, um, well, I smell okay, pretty clean, but getting ready to jump in the shower, and I'm getting ready to shave, and I'm getting ready to get all cleaned up again, you know, kind of make my baby face appear again and look young. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what men tell themselves. I need to shave so I can look young. <laughs> right. Uh, but before I jumped in the shower, you know, and I had been doing a lot of ministry work because I get up really early and start working on the internet, you know, part of the Biblical Christian Network is, you know, a lot of volumes of material that I'm reposting and posting and making and changing and arranging and putting in presentations and throwing it out there. It takes a lot of time. You know, 12 hour days get long, so sometimes I get and I work on the house, you know, and I work on these sets, you know, that we're kind of building around, you know, to kind of make something out of nothing, you know, because we don't have a budget. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Yeah, we use just everything we can find, and it's kind of why these pictures look like this. I have no toner. <laughs> oh, boy. But, you know, we use what we have, and we make it work, and... God knows, and God has blessed us, and we're in an incredible house, a well apartment, but it feels like a house because it's huge, and, and like I said, the door's open, anytime you want to come on over, come on over, you know, we'll share and relate, you know, talk, but when I was getting ready to get in the shower, and, you know, I was thinking, Lord, I got to get some devotionals going, so I need to hurry and get in the shower and get cleaned up, you know, and kind of do my hair and shave, you know, and get all fixed up, you know, and do the underarms, you know, and then spray the stuff, you know, and kind of come out. Of course, you couldn't tell the difference anyways because the camera, who knows if it's that good. I do zoom in. <laughs> but God spoke to me as I started to. He said, well, okay, he said, no, <laughs> that's what he said. And so I stopped and went, okay, what do you want me to do, Lord? And the Lord said, be real. So I went, I turned around, I went, be real, you want me to go record? And I was like, Yes, because, you see, God told me to be real, but he was saying, be real about who I am at this moment, because I've been sharing how Jesus is real. We want to, every once in a while, identify how real we are, I am, that I am just like you. Hey, there are days where, you know, I'm putting on my holy shirts, you know, because I'm working in the garden, or I'm working on the car, or I'm doing some other work that you get dirty, and that you don't always look like the polished, professional picture, you know, that you just, let's see, how's that go? You go, trying to think of the dance move. <laughs> go like this, and you go like this, and you go like this, and you go like that. You know, and you look professional. Oh well, anyways. You get the picture, that you always look shiny for everyone. You know, you don't dare be caught, you know, the way you really walk around the house. <laughs> All you women know what I'm talking about. I have a wife, so I know. <laughs> Honey, please. <laughs> no, no, dear. No, no, no. Go back in the bedroom. <laughs> okay, now, now you, you know, close the curtains. You know. <laughs> okay, now you can walk around, whatever you want to do. <laughs> don't tell me you don't do that. You know, especially if you get hot flashes. I know better. There's a wraparound, you know, you got to get the really thin wraparounds. <laughs> you know, because if you got a big, heavy house coat, what we used to call house coats, you know, because that's what you wore around the house. You know, those big, giant, fleecy, you know, warm things, you know? You don't wear those when you got hot flashes. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> no, women, most of the time, you know, when they're getting ready, you just go let them have the bathroom, you know, and stay far away. <laughs> That's what I do. So anyways, the point being is that sometimes we have an image as opposed to a reality. So in Vidivo, we always want to share the reality and the image because you may misconstrue things easily by reading something I've written because I know lots of times people read something I write and they go, wow, that guy's smart. <laughs> wow, that guy's creative. Wow, that guy wrote a few books. Really? That guy does, you know, ministry. Moi? That guy can sing. Uh-uh. <laughs> If I could put a shameless plug for Santos out there, 
go get Santos. No, I'm kidding. I just happened to see him today on the internet. I was kind of like, okay, you know, he's doing his ministry. He's all over the place. So shameless plug for you, Walter. <laughs> Sorry, Romaine. But anyways, getting back to the reality of who we are, we're people. You and I. Some days we look all shiny. We put on our suits and our ties. And I have all my suit coats that I keep hanging on the wall so that I could do like, you know, the presentation, you know, part. And I have my, you know, regular clothes that I wear, you know, different times. And when summer comes, I wear shorts, you know. I'm short a t-shirt, you know. If I could find some decent t-shirts, these have gotten all kind of, kind of holy. <laughs> and getting worse by the minute. But the point being is you be real with your God and be real with each other. Because when you're real, then God gets real. If I put on airs and act more spiritual than I am, then what I'm doing is I'm elevating myself to a position that I am not supposed to have. Because you see, God says he knows our down-sitting and our uprising. And that's what happens lots of times when people, when they're watching you, especially on the internet, or when they congratulate you in some way, they lift you up. To give you an example would be like Tim Tebow. You know, he got lifted up recently because he pulled off some games. Well, cool. That was great. You know, and he gave glory to God. He was thankful. But he got lifted beyond measure so that it became way over the top. And he just went on doing his normal thing. Because the normal routines, if you go on with your normal life, at times you will be lifted up. At times you will be set down. At times you will have the spotlight. At times you will be behind the scenes. For myself, the majority of my Christian experience was behind the scenes. Yes, me. Big mouth. <laughs> Moi? Big mouth? How'd I survive the Calvary? <laughs> Romaine was around. Hmm. But the reality of who we are should always be honest should always be truthful, should always be factual. Don't ever let people make you out to be more than you are, and don't let yourself fall into that trap of being more than who you are. Always be ready to be real at any moment of the day. To be, got your grungies, you know? <laughs> and I don't mean putting on the grunge. You know, or checking an attitude for grunge. Or wearing your shorts, you know, or your pants down to cover, you know, to reveal your shorts, or your shorts pulled down to reveal more than what we want to know. Too much information, people. Sorry, pull your pants up. <laughs> uh, boy, I don't know where styles are going, but they need to quit going down. <laughs> they need to be lifted up a little, <laughs> and I mean more than just spiritual. But likewise, in your devotionals, not only be real of who you are before God and before other people, and share with them the reality of who you are. Be real about Jesus. Because you see, we all have an image of who Jesus is. We have this Cecil B. DeMille. Wow! The greatest story ever told. I think that's Cecil B. DeMille. Or maybe it's Moses with Cecil B. DeMille and over here with someone else. Or Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth. Dun, dun, dun. You know, and I don't know about you, but when I was growing in the Lord. Every Easter, it seemed like, they would put on, for a week long, Franco Zeffirelli's part one of Jesus and others, and then part two, and then part three, and then part four, and then part five. I mean, it was a lot of parts. But the nice thing about all those parts, you'd hear that <sighs> orchestration. It was powerful. It was meaningful. It was like, man, I cried. And they'd have the scenes, you know. And man, I learned things that, you know, I still apply in the scriptures today. Like when Peter drunk as he fisherman that he was, you know, was sitting on the beach, you know, he's laying in the boat, you know, he's kind of like, and he hears this music, you know, he's like, ah, you know, that party's going on, you know, I know who it is, it's that Levi, I'm sure Jesus went to that party, so he gets out of the boat, and he kind of staggers over to the door, you know, and there's a couple of disciples, you know, standing out there, and he looks in the door, you know, and there's Jesus in the party, you know, and meanwhile, the rest of the disciples are behind Peter, because, you know, they take their cue from Peter. He's a big, burly fisherman. <laughs> you better take your cue, man. We're talking 300 pounds. Well, okay, he's not a football player. He's a fisherman. But he's big and burly. He knew how to hold his liquor, sort of. 
So anyways, he's standing in the, the doorway, but he won't go in. So meanwhile, there's Levi in there with all the prostitutes, you know, and all the party people, and there's Jesus. You know, and they're partying. I mean, you know, they're like, you know, eating and drinking, and they're so thrilled that a righteous man, the miracle worker, would come into their home, would come to the party thrown in his honor. So Jesus, knowing timing is perfect, sees Peter at the door. Then he begins to tell the parable of the prodigal son. Wow. Gives me goosebumps thinking about it right now. See, they're standing on in, and I got plenty of hair to stand on in. And it just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. But then the actor that plays Peter, you know, he's like, he's kind of like torn. You can see it on his face. He's being ripped to shreds by the prodigal son story, you know. And meanwhile, Levi is sitting there listening and listening. And Jesus stands up, you know, and he kind of hints at or kind of pulls Levi up with him. And then Peter begins to step in the door a little bit. And so the two of them are kind of like, you know, flash camera angle. You know, of course, it's Hollywood. <laughs> you know, what do you expect? <laughs> Come on now. you got to get in the moment. I get into it. Don't you? So you get into the moment, and there's Peter, and there's Levi, and it's like, Lord. And he, Jesus and Peter are talking, Lord, and Peter says, Lord, I'm just a sinful man. You know, I, I can't deal with this stuff, you know. And Jesus, you know, has one arm on him, and he says, I know, you know. And then he has his other arm on Levi, and then he goes, and he turns Peter a little bit towards Levi. And Peter, you know, kind of, you know, still a little bit stupid, but, you know, whatever. Looks at Levi and finally hugs him. It's like, That's one version of Jesus. You see, you kind of get a, a vision of what Jesus was like. Now, if you're a historian, historian, you realize Jesus didn't look blonde hair, blue eyes, and he didn't really look like some great or skinny or fat or tall or short movie star. He looked like a normal person, you know. Oh well. But there was nothing in him that really kind of made him stand out that much. But something about him, especially like if you were like born again also, and you're born again like I am, when he talked, when he began to lighten up, so to speak, from the spirit inside being overflowing with it, you knew there was something different about him. Well, that's kind of like when I used to go to Chuck Smith studies, you know, I'd go, you know, Chuck, in his normal kind of routines, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, there's Chuck, you know, you'd see Chuck were there or there or whatever. Boy, it seemed like when he was teaching, you know, it's kind of like, man, it almost sounded like he just came out from talking to the Lord, you know, you're kind of like, it's cool, you know, and it wasn't like we worshiped Chuck, it was like, Chuck was Chuck, I mean, you know, Chuck could give you some looks at, ooh, he's definitely a man too, <laughs> oh, but I didn't know him that well, I never got a chance to be like some of these other people where they were like, Hey, Chuck, let's go surfing. <laughs> I wasn't one of those. I was still kind of like, you know, behind the scenes doing all the other work. Well, they're all surfing. You know, those guys are all partying. And me and Romaine, you know, we're working on stuff. Okay, I'm working on stuff in the tea planting library. Romaine's doing his bathrooms. <laughs> and meanwhile, the future pastors are picking up parking lots, cigarette butts. And they know what I mean. <laughs> I used to see them out there. I used to go, hey, look at that. They're picking up cigarette butts. And that's a future pastor. <laughs> He's well, you know. He's doing a good job. He will be a pastor. Way to go, Greg. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Oh, well. The point being is that we have, from church history, though, lots of these Michelangelo's of Jesus with these brawny muscles from the, from the Renaissance age where they got these, you know, big, busty muscles, you know, because they were experimenting with art. You know what I mean? Kind of. You don't see people like that unless they're on steroids. And they didn't have steroids back then. Sorry. Or you get people that say, my Jesus isn't a wimp. He was a stonemason. Uh, well, no. You know, okay. You know, that's what your Jesus is. Because God relates to each of us where we're at. And it adds to our little bit of knowledge a little more as we begin to understand and incorporate who God is. Because the fact of the matter is, being God, we only know Jesus in a little bit of a way. So there's different kind of images we have of him that may not be accurate, but may be that type of person that we relate to on some level. God wants you to be real so that he can open up the rest of himself to you. 
He can reveal Himself as He did in Revelation where one minute you're going, Jesus, you know, and you're just like huggy, kissy, oh, love, 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 you know. But then all of a sudden, bam, the glory of God comes out of Him and you're like, boom. And you'll be on your face because I don't care how much you love God. I mean, Jesus, you'll be on your face because you'll feel like every atom you own, every cell you being in is exploding outward and falling apart. Like John said, I'm a man undone of unclean lips because all of a sudden everything that you know you are comes right to the forefront of your brain and you realize I can't live in that kind of holiness. It doesn't matter what you believe about righteousness or what God has done for you. You'll feel undone. Because until this corruption puts on incorruption, no offense, and this brain somehow really does get a brain flush, you're going to remember just what kind of sinner you are, no matter how righteous you've been for how long. And you'll feel unworthy, unholy, and whew, flat on your face. And they got to lift you up. So there's more to knowing Jesus. There's more to experiencing Him than just the buddy-buddy part. There's more to Him than just the Son of God part. There's more to Him than just being God part. Because Jesus will come to you wherever you are, however you are, as you need Him. But He wants to be with you like I am. He wants to be in your humanity, one with you. He wants to you to realize that because He lives in you, because He's with you always, because He sees everything you do, in the midst of your sin, He's with you. Even when you're sinning. He became sin. Who knew no sin? That reality of thinking about when you're in sin, and doing it, and God is in you, might help you to stop sinning. It won't, but it might. It might make you think of what you might be able to do to prevent and circumvent that freedom you have to go do whatever you want to do. Because I'm sure you don't want God to participate with you in your sin. Being real means being real in everything. And that's why God had me come out to share this. He knows you. And the beauty of what he did was that in so knowing, he died for you. I keep this picture very much up in the forefront of my studio, so to speak, because while it can't ever demonstrate what Jesus really went through, because it says he was marred worse than any other man, We've all seen presentations where we think we get a handle on it. I thank Mel Gibson for making it gory to the nth degree. So at least we could begin to grasp the reality of what we're going to find when we know that Jesus will bear the marks of his crucifixion for eternity because of the cost of what our sin did to him. That's why Mary didn't recognize him. That's why many people don't recognize him because not only because of the fact that when he's in heaven the glory is shining forth and he's like you know someone so bright you can't look at but the reality also is that he's so marred he's so devastated his beard was ripped down and if you don't think a Roman knows how to rip out beards they've been practicing that crucifixion routine for a long time before Jesus died a long time and they were killing people regularly and you got to remember that they were satanically inspired at that moment to devastate the example that God wanted to set up on earth as the perfect man. And so when the Roman procurator, Pontius Pilate, said, Ecce homo, behold the man, it was also behind the scenes all of the satanic and all of the angelic looking, beholding the Son of God. Behold the man. His humanity is how we relate to him. His divinity we have no clue of, not really. We only participate in it 
because he allows us his Holy Spirit to involve our spirit somewhat in a small way with him. We worship and we enjoy that part. But there's also reverence and awe and flat on your face stuff that maybe the Catholics weren't so far off on in some ways. Maybe the Lutherans aren't so weird in their Lent or whatever they're doing during this time. Maybe there's also a time to appreciate the full spectrum of who Jesus is today. Maybe we need to take a look again at Jesus in us. And not picture blonde hair, blue eyes. Not picture a man acting like Jesus and being, you know, severely makeup or outrageous, you know, special effects. But maybe we need to not imagine Jesus so much as we need to make real Jesus in us. Because when you find Jesus real in your day, you'll walk with him today. And you'll be so thrilled that he's become more real that you'll want more and more of him to be real. It's not just about ministry. No. It's not about just going out and doing things for God or for Jesus. Minister, man of God, pastor, teacher, elder, deacon, whoever you are, there is still more for you also to know about Jesus. So don't just get the ministry part and then run into it like I did this morning. And I do every morning that I just want to oh, tell people about what I do know. I need to pursue more so that I would get into even the mystics, you know, the mystical side where it's like, God, you're open up heaven. And just sit here for hours staring at the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Father. Would not you want to be transported into that place? Or are you too busy with your ministry? So you see, we're all on the same plane. We're all wanting to know more about Jesus. Or we should be wanting to know more. Because Jesus said, if you know me, and I know you, then you have eternal life. And this is eternal life. That they should know me and him who sent me. So besides knowing Jesus, which is wonderful. You know, we study the scriptures, we think about them, we ponder them. We should, like, get this image idea, you know, kind of work it through and then say, well, you know, yeah, but, you know, and then kind of get our own reality and then talk to Jesus personally about it, you know, because if you're only dealing with it from a far distance, then you need to go, uh, pull me closer, Lord, because I want to hear you. I don't want to just see you, although I would like you to hear right now, because you can. Don't be surprised. A lot of Jesus people, hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some interesting stories that I don't want to get into too much. But there are realities that we have not pursued in knowing God as much as we can. And the thing I would tell you to do, to do today would be to stop, like I did, the normal devotions. Stop the normal reality check. So do I have to get cleaned up in order to be with God? Or do I come as I am? Huh. Stop the ministry, O oh man of God, or woman of God, or whoever you are, and whatever ministry that God has given you to do, or you think you would do, or you kind of like wanting to do, turn it around and get real for a moment with God. Just a moment, please. One moment. And take time to ask Jesus to take you one step closer to knowing Him in a real way. And then also, take some time maybe, like I did, being real with you. Whoever your friends are, or whoever your people are that you share with, that you're a circle, you should have a circle, or a few friends, at least 12. <laughs> you know, remember the prodigal. Remember Peter and Levi. They didn't get along. They didn't like each other. They were disciples. And they would have died for each other. Learn to find a place with some people where you can be real. And take one little step towards being real with them. So that Jesus can be real with you. God bless you.